2003, when grandfather Victor McCleary was left in a coma with coronavirus, gave their final goodbyes. Victor, who couldn't eat or breathe for himself, lost six stone during his 11 weeks in hospital. But incredibly, his condition miraculously improved. And after learning how to sit, stand and walk again, he was allowed home. And we're thrilled to say he joins us now, along with his uh, fiance. Helen, good morning to both of you. Morning. Good morning. So, look, Victor, let's start with you, because hearing how close you came uh, to losing your life is truly terrifying. How are you feeling today? I feel quite fine, actually, under the circumstances. What are your memories of, of, of what it was like to firstly get ill and then quickly how that deteriorated and then, and then coming round out of the coma and, and going through your rehab? Yeah, my first memories was as I feeling quite ill. Uh, I don't normally get ill, like, but uh, I fell ill quite quickly. And then I remember nothing after that. So it was Helen that took over from there. Yeah. And could you, I mean, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but when you're in a coma, you, can you hear anything? Did you know that, could you hear the doctors and nurses around you? Because we understand, obviously, we've been talking to Kate, of mm. course, a lot, and uh, our lovely Kate Garraway is still going through something like this. And, um, you know, the idea that the ner doctor nurse make a great effort to keep talking to you through the whole thing, even though you appear to not be awake. At the time, I may well have actually heard things, but I can't remember uh, actually hearing things. You get such vivid dreams, and at, at the time, they seemed so real. But uh, obviously, looking back at that now, they wasn't real. Wow. Uh, yeah. Just extraordinary, isn't it? Uh, Helen, I mean, I wonder what it was like for you and the family to see Victor, who'd been so healthy and fit and full of life, to suddenly get ill and then be so cl close to the unthinkable. Awful. Absolutely awful. Really, really was. Devastating. How did you get through it? With the help of your family? Yeah, my daughter, Billy, my son, Jack. Um, they were absolutely brilliant. I don't know what I'd do with that. Yeah, it went on for so long, didn't it? Uh, and I think that often, you know, with a lot of these stories, you know, after a few weeks, people come out and you must have been one of those families just thinking another day, another day, another day. And it possibly may have felt like there was a dark tunnel with no light at the end of it at times. It was just, it was awful. just a waiting guy. That's what it was. Yeah. So when they said to you, because of course we know that they said, look, we think we may lose him, he may disappear. And then all of a sudden he started somehow making a recovery. What, how, do, how do you deal with that? Because on the one hand, you're about to be told to say goodbye. And then all of a sudden there's this glimmer of hope, Helen. Just, it was um, it's awful when, when they phoned to say that we didn't think he was going to make it. So obviously my, my daughter took the call and she was absolutely devastated with all that. And then a few hours later, we got in touch with him and they said uh, he started to improve slightly. And we couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. And you are not just, you've not just had a very close call with death, but your actual physical frame has changed, hasn't it, dramatically? I mean, the way we see you now, uh, Victor, is not at all, uh, you know, the body you went in with. Just tell us what's, what's changed and what's happened. Well, I'm half the size of the man I used to be, like... I've got to get a new wardrobe now, like, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's what, what, me. What, how heavy were you? Be I mean, if you don't mind me asking, I mean, you don't... How much, how, weight, yeah, you how much, how much weight have you lost and, and why? It was just over five stone that I lost. Uh, I don't know the reasons muscle. why. It was all your muscle. Yeah, it was muscle mass that I lost. So. Which is why you needed to learn to walk again and all of that. You must be incredibly yeah. grateful, the two of you, to the ICU n uh, nurses and doctors that managed to get you through it. Best, best in the world. Couldn't fault they those were absolutely brilliant. Hundred and ten percent off all of them. There's no quibbles, no moaning. Was, I was so lucky. And what so would you lucky. what would you say to them if you could see them today? I would love to shake them, hug them. Yeah, I'd love... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Thank you, can't, you. you can't shake them and you can't hug them because we're not allowed just yet. But we do have a little surprise for you because we are joined by some of that staff that cared for you at the ICU at Worcestershire Royal Hospital. They are Laura McGee, Jamie Bryson and Maggie Brennan all waving there. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Oh, look at your happy faces, Victor and Helen. Um, <laughs> what would you like to say to them before we... Oh, Helen, I know it must be very emotional for you to see the people who... Saved your, your partner life. of many, many years mm -hmm. survived. What would you like to say to them? Oh, oh, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for bringing my Mr. Home to me. <laughs> <laughs>
And Jamie and Laura, you both worked in the ICU when uh, Victor must have been unconscious, I suppose. Just talk to us about, we were just asking Victor what he remembered, and he doesn't say he remembers anything, but what is it that you have to do in a way to keep a patient going, not just medically, but, you know, the idea that they may be listening and they may be, you know, they can hear what's going on. Yeah, we talk to the patients all the time. Um, we have no idea if they can hear us or not. So, um, yeah, we just keep telling them everything that we're doing, all of the interventions, anything that's going on, allows that they might hear. Um, I remember Victor was extremely sick at one point. Um, it was very difficult to ventilate him, so um, his oxygenation levels were not good enough. Um, he was on maximum settings. Um, in the end, we actually had to flip him over onto his tummy, uh, which is one of the procedures that we have to do. Um, obviously, we have to talk him through all of that as well. Um, yeah, that was... And ja uh, Jamie, it sounds like Victor Mega has made a miraculous recovery. We're hearing wonderful tales of recovery across this whole thing. But, but for, on the one hand, as you were just hearing, that things were really bad and his family were told, look, it might be time to say goodbye. And then very quickly to see that turnaround. For you as nurses, and I know you're focusing really hard, that must be an extraordinary rush and, and a real sense of sort of like we're doing the right thing if you can suddenly see that change in condition. Absolutely. Um... It's obviously been a hard few months for everybody involved, um, but we're incredibly proud. It's an amazing team here at Worcester, um, and we're really impressed to see how well that Victor's done on his journey through ITU and through his rehab. It's great to see him now looking so well for everything that he's been through and that he survived. There were so many times during the earlier stages of his admission into ITU where we were worried and we were getting, you know, anxious that we were going to have to make that phone call to his family and let them know that this could be it. Um, but we're just incredibly proud. We're proud to be nurses and to be a part of your journey. And um, it, took, it took all of this, all of this, Helen, all these years of him not making an honest woman of you. And then eventually what happened when he came out? What was, what was one of the first things he did? Um, I remember. <laughs> I think he asked you to marry him, didn't he? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's something. Sorry, yeah. But he's going to get on one knee, and he can't do that yet, so... <laughs> you're, not, you're not giving in that easily, then, even after... Is it 37 years you've been together? 37 years, yeah. Well, look, Victor, you can't rush these things. I know that. There's a lot of pressure these days. <laughs> right now. Oh, could we do it? Go on. Victor, could, no, well, we can't make could him we do get, that. Go on, look, they're applauding. Could, no, oh, Maggie... No, hold on a sec. Everyone's saying no now. You've got oh, medical oh. advice here, Victor, live on air. He'll... Um, <laughs> Do it oh. on everything. Oh, you can't no. get down on one knee. I can't get down. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's lovely to see everybody with big smiles on their faces this morning. Uh, thank you very much to Jamie, Maggie and Laura uh, for joining us as well. What you're doing and what you're continuing doing, uh, we can never say thank you enough for. Uh, and I know that, obviously, uh, Victor and Helen have huge hugs they will give you at some point when eventually we can, because you have yeah. saved uh, Victor's life. And, and thank you guys so much for joining as well. Make sure you film that moment, though, when he gets down on one knee and he can get back up again. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good stuff. <laughs> Lovely. Amazing. Funny, isn't it? It's what we want what to hear happened when well. he came out? I can't remember. Oh, the wedding thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just that thing. thing. It's so lovely. So.